Hello, this is David Deger Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. You know, I love talking about the person of the Holy Spirit, and I know that you love hearing about Him. So right now, I want to talk to you about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There are many things that He does for the believer, and I'm going to talk about a few of those things. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then... We're going to get right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. To you are all things. Deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, to you are all things. You deserve the glory You are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all For from you are all things To you are all things You deserve the glory So what is it that the Holy Spirit does in our lives? Well, there are many things that He does, but I want you to imagine Jesus standing in front of you in physical form. There are times when the presence of Jesus becomes so real that there is a tangible sense to His presence. And that is a result of the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who I like to say vivifies the Savior. He intensifies the reality of Christ. Why is that? Well, that's because the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Father are one. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. You've often heard it said, well, if only Jesus was here, I could face my situation with a little more faith. Or if only Jesus was here, then as I read the scriptures, he would be able to teach me what he meant. But you don't have to wonder what it would be like to walk with Jesus because the Holy Spirit is the presence of Jesus in your life. The Holy Spirit is the literal spiritual presence of Jesus abiding with you 24-7. So you don't have to ask what it would be like to walk with Jesus. He walks with you now through His Holy Spirit. I'll never forget in my life, when I first really began to dig into the Word and into prayer, and you know, I commit myself to prayer and I commit myself to the Word, and I always see that there is room for growth. But I'll never forget that first season of my life where prayer began to permeate my being. I remember looking around me. I saw the ministry. I saw the church. I saw believers. I saw pastors. And it all was kind of one thing to me. It was Christianity. But in that season of my life, there was something deep inside of me that said, there has to be more than this. There was this stirring. There was this fire that I could not ignore or extinguish. It was a fire that was growing within my spirit. And everything within me cried out for something more. Now, the Holy Spirit is a someone. But that something more comes from Him. 
He is that something more. And I remember I was standing around with some ministry volunteers and we were about to put on this ministry event. I was going to preach the gospel, pray for the sick. And they're all surrounding me as we pray and we're believing God for miracles. And we joined hands and began to seek the Lord. The service was to start in about an hour. And we begin to pray. We begin to seek the face of God. And all of a sudden, this boldness came on me. This realization came over me. Jesus is here. And I said it loudly and boldly. I said, Jesus is here. And one of the team members said, Amen. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. Jesus is here. And as I began to make that declaration, the presence of Jesus began to intensify in that room. The intensification grew to such a point that those who were praying with me were on their faces weeping before God and trembling under the anointing as I declared, Jesus is here. Why? Because Jesus walked into that room. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. So we have Him with us. And if the Son of God relied upon the power of the Holy Spirit when He walked here on the earth, how much more should we? If Jesus needed the power of the Holy Spirit, how much more do we? The early church was empowered by Him. The apostles were empowered by Him. The Son of God was empowered by Him. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. So here are some of the things that He does. Number one, He helps us pray. The scripture calls him the spirit of prayer. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, the Bible says that I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the family of David and on the people of Jerusalem. They will look on me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grieve bitterly for him as for a firstborn son who has died. Now there I want you to notice a few things. Number one, it calls him the spirit of prayer. Number two, he's called the spirit of grace. I heard a preacher one time say, He's not the grace spirit, he's the Holy Spirit. And it was to push a legalistic message that he had made that declaration. But in fact, the scripture refers to him as the grace spirit. And thirdly, I want you to notice from this portion of scripture that the Holy Spirit caused the people to look to the cross. Let's read it again. They will look on me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. So here when the spirit of prayer comes on an individual, it points their attention to Jesus. It points their attention to the finished work of the cross. That's what that power does. The Holy Spirit gives us that power to pray. If ever you've run into a situation where you're seeking God and you don't know what to pray, you don't know how to pray, you don't know what specific words you should speak, you say, should I worship? Should I pray in tongues? Should I read the Bible? Should I pace? Should I lie down? Should I kneel? How do I pray? The Holy Spirit will help you. All you have to do is ask for His help. All you have to do is say, Holy Spirit, guide me, direct me, lead me, and He will help you to pray. Number two, He teaches us the Word. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He gives us revelation of the Word, and that revelation brings transformation because revelation brings transformation, not just information. And so the Holy Spirit reminds and He reveals. He reminds us of what God has spoken to us through the Word, and He reveals truth through the words of Jesus, through the teaching of Scripture. The Word of God in our lives, coupled with the power of the Holy Spirit, creates spiritual growth. The Holy Spirit takes the truth and builds us with that truth. When we receive truths from the Word of God, we are receiving the building materials for our spiritual foundation, and we hand those over to the Holy Spirit, and He constructs the spiritual foundation in our lives. So He teaches us the Word is number two. Number three, He empowers us unto holiness. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. You will not fulfill the sinful nature and what it craves if you have the power of the Holy Spirit. The key to defeating sin in your life, yes, it's loving Jesus. Yes, it's getting into the Word. But one of the keys to defeating sin in your life 
is spending time with the Holy Spirit. Whenever temptation comes my way, and believe me, I'm tempted just as often as you are. Whenever temptation comes my way, instead of debating it in my mind and weighing it, as we so often do when temptation comes our way, I'll simply retreat and say, Holy Spirit, help me. I want you to try that next time you're faced with temptation. Don't enter that debate because if you start debating, if you start weighing with the flesh and with the spirit and you start considering the consequences of if I do it, if I don't, then you will lose that battle every time. Jesus said, flee from temptation, not ponder temptation, not meditate on temptation, not consider the temptation, but flee. So what I do, and I want you to try this, when temptation comes your way, whether that be a sinful thought, whether that be a sinful deed that presents itself, whether that be a sinful attitude like bitterness or unforgiveness or anger or pride, I want you to, in the moment, call out to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. And keep calling him until that sinful desire is broken over you. And you will see that in those moments, if you truly cry out to him, not, not just saying the words, but meaning the words. If you're truly crying out for the Holy Spirit's help, he will come in and he will rescue you because he is the holiness spirit. So number one, he helps us to pray. Number two, he teaches us the word. Number three, he empowers us unto holiness. Number four, he helps us to worship. John chapter four, verse 24 says, for God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. All true worship is a response to revelation. If there is no revelation, it isn't truly worship. It's just singing. It's just declaration. But the Holy Spirit gives us a revelation of God with such clarity and such power that it invokes in us a response to adore and glorify God based upon what he's revealed. So the Holy Spirit helps us to worship. You'll go from saying, how do I worship? To I don't know how to stop. When you have the Holy Spirit stirring that love for Jesus in your heart. And by the way, nobody loves the Holy Spirit. Nobody loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. And if you'll surrender to him, he will give you that same love. But if you will surrender to the Holy Spirit, if you will allow him to ignite that flame within you when you're worshiping, you won't be able to contain yourself. It will just flow out of you 24 seven. That worship will be a part of your lifestyle and you will walk in true worship, and that attracts the power of God on your life. So just to recap, number one, he helps us to pray. Number two, he helps us to understand the word. Number three, he empowers us unto holiness. Number four, he enables us to worship truly. Now, I'm going to talk to you more about the ministry of the Holy Spirit next week. There are other things that he does, but for now, I'm going to bring this lesson to a close. I want to pray with you. And I want to guide you in a prayer that will help you to yield yourself to the work of the Holy Spirit. So in faith right now, I want you to stretch your hands toward mine. And I want you to say, Holy Spirit, I give you my life. Make of me what you will. I surrender all. Take over in the name of Jesus. Now I'm gonna pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this prayer now. And I pray that they would be empowered with the power of the Holy Ghost, that they would allow him to manifest his work in their lives. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in that heart. Holy Spirit, we love you. Make our lives what they ought to be. Flow through us now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to say, because you agree, say amen. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. Now, if you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch to join the Spirit family today. Now over 6,000 members strong from all around the world. When you join, you get an email that includes a new lesson, a new worship song every single week, and you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. Now, I want to read your comments. And these are the comments from my teaching, how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And this teaching, I believe, 
will help you to walk in intimacy with God in a way you've never known possible because you can hear his voice with both confidence and clarity. Now, if you'd like me to potentially read your comments on the next edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV network, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below right now. And also, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to subscribe and share our content. And when you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so that you receive all of the new content right when it comes out. So here are the comments from How to Hear the Voice of the Holy Spirit. Armand writes, Thank you, Pastor, for a clear teaching on how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. God bless you and the ministry He placed you in. Jennifer Jones writes, Power is not found in systems. It is found in obedience. She's quoting the lesson and she says, So true. But Dom Esther writes, Praise Jesus. I'm Esther from India. Thank you, Pastor David. I was really struggling to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I just came through this sermon on YouTube. Thank you for Encounter TV. It blessed me and took me a little closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, Pastor. And Elvira Geosis writes, How sweet is Jesus? He's always giving me answers to questions I have and gives confirmation through teachings on Encounter TV. I just can't believe what a beautiful thing it is to know Jesus. God bless this ministry once again. So Elvira is talking about how she's learning from the content, new things, and how God is speaking to her. And she is one of thousands who are being impacted by this ministry every single month. In fact, our ministry reaches two to three million people with the gospel every 28 days through all of our platforms combined. And this is where I need your help. I want to read a scripture to you. And it's found in Exodus chapter 3, verse number 7. This is God talking to Moses about the children of Israel. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because they're harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. Now, God heard the suffering of the children of Israel. God heard their cries and he chose to send Moses as a deliverer. God hears the cries of the lost. Do you? How much is a soul worth to you? Do you realize that your obedience could change someone's eternity? When you respond and join in partnership with kingdom-centered ministries like this one, you in fact are helping us to win the lost. There is nothing more important than eternity. There's no message more important than the gospel of salvation. And we are winning souls and building believers through events and media. Help us to continue doing this. All of our content is free. All of our events are free. And God supports this ministry through givers like you, people who are generous, who decide that they're going to take from what God has given them and invest it into souls. So I want to challenge you. Give a gift, a one-time gift or a monthly gift, large or small, today. If this content has blessed you, if you resonate with this ministry, if you love that this is the Holy Spirit's channel and you believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ must be preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, then give today. If you will sign up to become a partner for $30 or more a month, I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, or Encountering the Holy Spirit in Every Book of the Bible. I'll sign it. And that will be my initiation gift to say thank you for being my partner. And that's for those of you who will sign up for $30 or more a month. But again, all gifts matter, one time or monthly, large or small. Do something today for the gospel. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.